This is Diamond Dog's Final Finger Puppet Management presentation for Principles of Management class. Our group consists of Samuel Dempster, Quinta McMillan, Casey Canella, Corey Schnur, Grayson Kelly Schott. Plot. The general plot of our TV show refers to the permit for Mark's company, Gray Matter Corporation, to construct a landfill in a local basin in Nevada. Mark is the antagonist of the series and he seeks to undermine the chain of management. Richard is the director of Parks and Recreation in Nevada. He holds the ability to give the antagonist Mark the permit. Ultimately, Richard weighs out the options and he decides that it would be more beneficial if the basin stayed as a local hotspot for tourists and a local source of revenue for the city of Nevada. Ben is a local Parks and Recreation employee who is married to Susie. Ben is ultimately involved in the scheme that undermines management and he is bribed into the forgery of a permit for the company Gray Matter Corporation. This basin serves as the point of conflict in the show. It brings drama and, it, and also is a means of action to the locals and viewers of our show alike. Character Profile Mark Mark is a charismatic manager from Gray Matter Corporation. He was sent to Nevada to negotiate with the Parks and Recreation Office about receiving a permit to dump in a local basin. Mark is very goal-oriented and is determined to accomplish his assignment by any means necessary. Mark displays several concepts of management, including the basics of decision-making and the role of management. He also acts as an example of purely rational management, focused entirely on logic and doing whatever is necessary to reach his goals, while not caring about the effects to the people around him. Character Profile Richard Richard is the Director of Parks and Recreation in Nevada. While Richard is very environmentally conscious, he will stop at no ends to stop Mark's plans to ruin the basin. In Richard's role, he denies Mark's original request for a permit. He also has to handle the crisis management after Ben forges a permit and a shady deal with Mark. Ultimately, he works with upper management at Gray Matter Corp. to solve the problem. The permit is nullified and Ben is fired. Richard acts as an example of bounded rationality and as a sort of idolized manager. Character Profile Susie Susie is nitpicky in the fact that she wants what is best for her family while not caring about the effect on others. She is fiscally responsible and savvy with an aptitude for speaking her mind. Family is Susie's main concern and she does not want the basin to be turned from a local hotspot into a literal garbage heap. Susie is socially conscious and not afraid to speak what is on her mind. She takes on a manager of the household role and goes to show that managers come in all facets of life and not just in a business sense. Finally, Susie serves to show the concepts of gender focus and the planning process, as she is a woman while also being very organized in what she does. Character Profile Ben Ben is an employee at the Nevada Parks and Recreation Office. He's a seemingly bumbling employee and feels strictly controlled by his manager, Richard, and his wife, Susie. He meets with Mark about the basin permit and denies it originally. When approached by Mark again with a shady deal, Ben rebels against the strict management of his life and grants Mark a forged permit. Ben displays irrationality, decision-making that is fueled only by emotions and no logic whatsoever. He also breaks the code of ethics by taking a bribe and causes a crisis within Parks and Recreation. Episode 5. This episode resides on Ben breaking the code of ethics when he goes behind the company's back and forges Mark the permit. Ben is bribed by Mark with a lump sum of money to give Mark the permit he's after. Richard la later finds out about what Ben has done and is furious. Richard holds a legal meeting while inviting the board of directors of Mark's company at Gray Matter Corporation. In this episode, we hope to convey the code of ethics. Episode 6. Richard has the meeting with his staff before the major meeting with the board of Gray Matter Corporation. After reviewing the mistake, the meeting will proceed into how the basin that is being fought so hard to preserve matters to the community 
along with why it is held in such high regard. After assessing the damage and the steps that the Parks and Recreation Office needs to take, they will address the problem head-on while having the meeting with the Board of Directors from Gray Matter Corporation. This will begin a process of meetings and fines with lawyers and written agreements that Parks and Recreation will have to deal with in the future. The concepts we choose to show in this episode are crisis management and effective communication. Episode 7. The meetings commence and the issue is solved with documents to sign. The board of directors within Grey Matter Corporation were displeased with Mark's hasty actions and never condoned bribing as a tactic to get the company what they want. They fully understand the intention of why Mark did this, however. Mark, in a sense, also broke the code of ethics within his own company, making the face of the company look horrible. Both the Parks and Rec of Nevada and Grey Matter Corporation resolved the issue by dissolving the contract that was given to Mark and having the corporation seek land elsewhere. Both Mark and Ben are let go from their respective positions, which is a consequence of disobeying the rules of engagement when dealing with a manager's set rules. The concepts we hope to cover in this episode are the code of ethics, conflict resolution, and crisis management. This management class has opened my eyes to the hardships and day-to-day -day struggles faced by people in a professional environment. I feel like the concepts applied throughout this class are actually used in a business scenario and be less cynical by throwing away the when will this ever be used in real life mindset. I also feel this class is meant to be a primarily group project based class as it teaches us that we are in fact our own managers and we are given the responsibility to manage ourselves and our time as resources in their own. My group made the experience a pleasant one along the way as we all got along and we developed a trust in each other. We all put our own individual skills to use on each assignment. And we got lucky because we all knew something special that could add to the group project as a whole. This class has been an overall unique experience. I've never had an online class that was so focused on group work. It's certainly been interesting, though not the most convenient. Much of the work is very much done better in person, but not having everyone be from the same campus made this more difficult. That and having to coordinate around different work schedules was a challenge that would have been alleviated with an in-person class. Still, my team has been hardworking and creative, and have pulled through on every assignment. We've worked well together as a team, and we've all helped facilitate understanding of class concepts for each other. I was definitely lucky to get the group one did, as it made group work much more tolerable than it is in most circumstances. This class was definitely a new experience to me. I had never had a more group project-based class before this one, but it was a pleasant experience nonetheless. While working on various milestones and projects, I felt like I was being quizzed on a real-life business and actually enjoyed the thought-provoking and intuitive concepts demonstrated throughout the book. I feel like I am more equipped to work in a professional environment outside of school and am looking forward to apply some of these concepts to my real life, finally. I can see the emphasis that is placed on our group work and communication and how we improved our experience by being kind and creative with others in our group and the real world as well. I had a great time with the people I worked with and hope to meet people like them in real life. The group work in this class was generally very interesting and stimulating online classes don't usually have such a focus on group work, but the focus in this class as well as the quality of my group made the work fly by the video lectures made it easy to get a general idea of each week's concepts and were easy to refer back to while working on the group project. The design challenges each week also offered an interesting twist to our homework. They were more interesting and thoughtful than the writing logs. There were some small issues meeting with my group because of distance and work schedules. But thanks to things like Skype and Google Docs, we were able to work around them for the most part and still get all of our work done effectively. 
I found this class to be very interactive but educational at the same time. Throughout the semester the writing logs really helped me learn the management concepts in the chapters. Working within groups in an online class one found to be very unique and challenging at some times. I felt the group projects indeed helped the management concepts stick. I thought Dr. Diazio's very unique style of teaching and his real-world examples helped me understand management as a whole better. I feel like now after taking this class I am equipped to one day become a manager and be successful. Our conclusions on management. Good managers can effectively demonstrate various concepts throughout the book and assure that others can also understand the concepts. Management is necessary in conducting day-to-day -day interactions and assuring people are on the same page in work and schooling. Management is not something that comes naturally and must have effort put forth to develop. And we are all our own managers and should act accordingly. Our recommendations for the class. Throughout the semester, we found it best when we worked collectively as a group to accomplish this project. We wanted to make sure not one group member was bearing all the weight of this large project. We used tools such as PowerPoint, QuickTime Player, Sprite Maker, and Go Animate to make our episodes. Creativity is definitely encouraged. As a group, we recommend that students work ahead on the projects to keep up with all of the milestones and deadlines. But we also recommend being creative when designing your shows and characters. Lastly, do not hesitate to ask Dr. Diasio or Jessica Weekly with any questions or concerns you may have throughout the semester, as they were very helpful and informative when our group needed help. But most importantly, you must have fun and be creative with your projects. Thank you for watching. This is Group Diamond Dogs, and we are Samuel Dempster, Quinta McMillan, Casey Canella, Corey Schnur, and Grayson Kelly Shadd.